Hey guys, welcome to Geo with Mutuku. In today's video, we are covering the topic of mid latitude cyclones. Yes, mid latitude cyclones. Now, mid latitude cyclones are also known as temperate cyclones, moderate cyclones, extra tropical cyclones, and frontal depressions. Those are the alternate names of mid latitude cyclones. Temperate cyclones moderate cyclones extra tropical cyclones and frontal depressions now this is how you will see your miniature cyclone in synoptic weather map now it's a miniature cyclone is a cold front and the warm front now the cold front the cold front has light sorry has triangles along the line you see these triangles these represent our cold front for our warm front, we have semicircles along a line. Semicircles along a line. So in blue, I have my cold front. In, in red, I have my warm front. Now, you need to know that behind the cold front, that's where we will find our cold air. Behind the cold front. So you can say that the cold front is the leading edge of our cold air mass. And then behind our warm front, that's where we get warm air. So our warm front is the leading edge of a warm air mass because we find the warm air behind a warm front. We find the cold air behind a cold front. Now to define my cold front, it is the leading edge of a cold air mass. To define my warm front, we say it is the leading edge of a warm air mass if you look at the iso bar readings we have a 1008 hectopascals we have 1006 hectopascals the iso bar readings are decreasing towards the center that's because the mid latitude cyclone is a low pressure system i told you guys in my previous video for a low pressure cell the iso bar values will decrease towards the center and if you look at these black arrows these arrows are depicting my air circulation for my cyclone for a mid latitude cyclone the air circulation will be clockwise in the southern hemisphere in the southern hemisphere the air circulation will be clockwise this area behind the cold front the cold where it is cold air is known as the cold sector so the area of cold air is known as the cold sector but this area behind the warm front, an area of warm air, is our warm sector. Is our warm sector. And if you look at my diagram, you see that I drew another mid latitude cyclone before this one. That's because mid latitude cyclones do not occur in isolation. They occur as a family. You find two or more cyclones moving along the same path. We call these a family, a family of cyclones or cyclone families. Okay, now that we know that our mid latitude cyclone is a cold front and a warm front, a cold sector and a warm sector, I want us to go back to global air circulation from grade 11 because these topics are linked. Now, from global air circulation, we have three planetary winds with our tropical easterlies between 0 to 30 degrees, we had our westerlies between 30 to 60 degrees, and then we had polar easterlies between 60 and 90 degrees. Now our mid latitude cyclone is found in our mid latitudes. Let's look at the southern hemisphere. Now this is the southern hemisphere. We have 0, 30, 60 and 90. Midway, our mid latitudes are from 30 to 60. This is halfway. So this is where we have our mid latitude cyclone. And if you look at the planetary wind which we have between 30 to 60, it is the westerly. It is our westerlies. These winds are named westerlies because they come from the west or they originate at the west. This means that our mid latitude cyclone is driven or it is steered by the westerlies. So when you look at the direction of movement for mid latitude cyclone, you must tell us that they go from west towards the east. They go from west to east or you can say they go eastwards or they are going towards the east or you can say they are going in an easterly direction but they are driven by what? by 
west winds because we name the winds based on where they come from. If they come from the west, they are named west winds. Between zero, sorry, between 30 degrees to 60 degrees, we have west winds. And our mid latitude cyclone is found between 30 degrees to 60 degrees. Okay. Now, another thing I want us to note is the position of our polar front. We have a polar front 60 degrees, 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south. We have a polar front. Now, a polar front is a boundary between two air masses of different moisture content. If you look at our westerlies, our westerlies are bringing warm, moist air from the equator. But our polar easterlies are bringing cold, dry air from the poles. So where they meet, this boundary is 60 degrees, known as our polar front. Let's look at it one more time. It's very important when we do the stages of the mid latitude cycle. Uh, our westerlies bring warm moist air from the equator. Our polar easterlies bring cold, dry air from the poles. Now, where they meet at 60 degrees south, we have a polar front. A polar front is a boundary between two air masses of different moisture content. Above it is the westerlies, which bring warm moisture. Below it, we have our polar easterlies bringing cold, dry air. So these air masses have different moisture content. And then this boundary between them is known as the polar front at 60 degrees south and 60 degrees north. Okay. Now that we know um, where it occurs and the direction of movement, we can now define our mid latitude cyclone. So we can define it as a low pressure weather system, a low pressure. Remember I told you cyclones are low pressure cells or low pressure systems, right? And then anti-cyclones are high pressure systems or high pressure cells, right? So a mid latitude cyclone is a low pressure weather system that occurs between 80 degrees to 60 degrees in our northern hemisphere and in our southern hemisphere. It moves from west to east. It moves from west to east. That's the direction of movement, west to east. Or you can say eastwards. You can say eastwards because as it goes from the west to east, it's moving in an eastward direction. It's going towards the east. So direction of movement can be west to east or eastwards as it is driven by the westerlies. Remember, the planetary wind, which is found between 30 degrees and 60 degrees, is our westerlies. It comes from the west. If the wind comes from the west, it is known as a westerly. So it is a low pressure weather system that occurs between 30 degrees to 60 degrees in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere and it moves from the west to the east or eastward as it is driven by our westerlies. Okay, now that you know the direction of movement is from west to east or eastward, and we know that our mid latitude cyclones occur between 30 degrees to 60 degrees, it is also very important to note that mid latitude cyclones occur throughout the year but they only affect South Africa in wind. Now let's look at the position of our mid latitude cyclone in summer. In summer. As you can see in summer, it is far away from South Africa. Hence, it has no effect on South Africa. This is because of the position of the ITCZ, the Intertropical Convergence Zone covered in the 11. The ITCZ. Now in the 11, you learned that the ITCZ migrates not in winter, but then in summer it migrates south. It migrates south. Now, as it migrates south, our high pressure belts are also migrating south, pushing our mid latitude cyclone further south. Hence, there's no effect on South Africa in summer. That's because of the position of the ITC, sorry, ITC Z, the Intertropical Convergence Zone. It migrates south in summer, pushing our pressure belt further south, which also pushes our mid-latitude cyclone further south in summer. 
but then in winter our ITCZ migrates north. Now let's change it. Here's my ITCZ. It migrates north. In winter, my ITCZ, my intertropical convergence zone, migrates north. Here's my ITCZ now. It's migrated north. Now my high pressure belt will also migrate north. Here's my high pressure here. Here's my high pressure there. Now this also allows my mid-lateral cyclone to also migrate north. And as it migrates north in winter, that's when it has an effect on South Africa. Now here's the position of my mid-lateral cyclone. It has migrated north following the ITCZ. Now the ITCZ migrates with the apparent movement of the sun. Okay. So now this is winter. Let me change this to winter. This is now winter. Winter. This is when the mid-lateral cyclone affects South Africa in winter. Because in winter, the ITCZ, the intertropical convergence zone, migrates north. Our high pressures here also migrate north, allowing my mid-lateral cyclone to also migrate north and therefore having an effect on South Africa. But it's very important to note that it is the cold front which has an effect on South Africa, not the warm front. It is the cold front. The warm front lies too far south. As you can see in the diagram, here's my warm front. It lies too far south. But then my cold front is the one which has an effect on South Africa on the west. ITCZ, very important. So in winter, our mid lateral cyclone migrates north following the movement of the ITCZ. Because the ITCZ also migrates north. But the movement, the general movement has not changed. It is still going from west to east. It's just that in winter it migrates north. Therefore, it has an effect on South Africa. Okay, now let's go on to cyclogenesis or the stages in the development of our cyclone, our mid latitude cyclone. Stage one is our initial stage where it all starts. Initial stage. Now, I remember I told you guys to pay attention at the position of the polar front. This is my polar front, 60 degrees south, and it's also there, 60 degrees north. This is my polar front. Polar front. Above my polar front on the south, I had my westerly. These were my westerlies, and then below my westerlies, these are my polar easterlies. So my westerlies are bringing warm air. This is my warm air. Below the polar front, I have cold air from the from my polar easterlies. Cold air from my polar easterlies and warm air, warm air from my westerlies. Then this line, 60 degrees south, is my polar front. I mentioned that the polar front is a boundary between two air masses of different moisture content. On this side of the polar front is my cold air. On the other side is my warm air. In this stage, my polar front is stationary. It is fixed. It is a straight line. It is stationary. It's also known as the stationary front. My polar front is a stationary front in this stage. Now, if you look at my winds, this is my warm air. So, not my wind, my air. This is my warm air and this is my cold air. Now, both air masses are moving parallel to each other in opposite directions. This one is going towards the east and the cold air is going towards the west. So, my air masses are moving parallel to each other in opposite directions the state the polar front is stationary it is stationary and my air masses are moving parallel to each other in opposite directions now this is what's happening in our initial stage air masses moving parallel to each other in opposite directions my polar front is stationary it is stationary remember a polar front is a boundary between two air masses of different moisture content. Very important to note that friction occurs as these air masses move parallel to each other in opposite direction. 
friction occurs due to the differences in temperature, differences in velocity. Remember, the cold air moves faster than the warm air, and differences in the uh, surfaces which they are moving them due to the uneven surfaces which they are uh, flowing on top. Okay, now stage two of the formation of my military cyclone is known as the wave formation stage or the development stage. This is when a, a wave starts to form in my polar front. My polar front is no longer stationary, it is now as a wave. And we know that our cold air moves faster than our warm air, it moves faster than our warm air. And then my warm air starts to rise. And now as it rises, it forms a low pressure center now here we have our low pressure because warm air starts to rise in our wave formation stage or our development stage okay now let's look at our mature stage this is the most important stage as most exam questions will ask you about the mature stage now on a synoptic weather map how would you know that this is a mature stage firstly our cold front and our warm front are fully developed they are fully developed. Our warm sector and our cold sector is also well developed and it also forms a well-defined V-shape. A well-defined what? V-shape. Unlike in the initial stage where it was just, sorry, unlike in the wave stage where it was just a wave. In my mature state, it is a well-defined what? V-shape. And our low pressure is intensified. It is intensified. It's also very important to note that our cold sector is bigger than our warm sector. That's because cold air moves faster than warm air. It moves faster than warm air. And then as it moves, it is going to undercut our warm air, forcing our warm air to rise, forcing it to rise. Hence, the warm sector is smaller than the cold sector. Now, in our mature stage of the cyclone, that's where we have strong winds, heavy precipitation, more cloud cover, and the formation of our cumulonimbus nimbus clouds along the cold front. Now, the next stage after the mature stage is our occlusion stage. Our occlusion. Stage 4, occlusion. This is when our cold front is finally caught up with the warm front. This is because cold air moves faster than warm air. So, Cold air is more heavy and dense, so it, as it catches up with the warm air, it is heavy and dense, it will sink and undercut the warm air, forcing it to rise. Hence, we can see the warm sector is becoming narrower and narrower, it's becoming smaller and smaller. Uh, if, you, if you remember, in my mature stage, the warm sector was smaller, but now in the occlusion stage, it's becoming smaller and smaller, it's becoming narrow. And this is how you know when there's an occlusion. On the synoptic weather map. Right at the apex, this is the apex. Apex is the shortest distance between the warm, warm front and the cold front. We call that the apex. Right at the apex, now the cold front and the warm front are now alternating. We have a triangle, then a semicircle, triangle, semicircle, triangle. That's how you know that there is an occlusion. This is when the cyclone is, is going into the dissipating stage where it will die off or degenerate. Oh, 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 o